Hi everyone, it's Amy here from the blog I Think Therefore I Teach. Welcome to your next pop of philosophy. This five minute summary is going to go over the topic of the problem of evil. So let's get my timer started. I do like this topic, so let's see if I can do it. Here we go, start. Okay, the easiest way to deal with this topic is to break it into three main sections. The first section is the logical aspects of the problem of evil. So this questions, how does evil actually exist? Where do we get the problem from? And this problem comes about and is summarised by Epicurus in later term, The Inconsistent Triad by J.L. Mackey. And the um, inconsistent triad is the idea of if God is all powerful, then he just must not want to stop evil, therefore he's not all loving. If he's all loving and he just can't stop evil, then he can't be all powerful. But if God is all powerful and all loving, then why does evil exist? And these form what is known as the inconsistent tribe because they do not go together. They are inconsistent. And so this is known as the logical aspect because logically, how can God be all loving and all powerful and evil exist? The next part of this topic is the Theodicies. These are presented by St. Augustine and John Hick. St. Augustine um, presented the Theodicy. Theodicy meaning justification of God with evil in the world. He presents the idea that um, rebellious angels and Adam and Eve are what corrupted and destroyed God's perfect paradise. So God created everything in absolute perfect and said, do not touch the apple. He let that one rule down so that free will stood and said, do not touch from that tree. And what Adam and Eve did was Eve took the apple, gave it to uh, Adam and they ate the apple this then corrupted and destroyed the perfect harmony because they broke that covenant they broke that promise with God and so that moral evil of turning their backs on God and breaking a promise brought in that natural evil so natural evil is a result of the moral evil that Adam and Eve did so why is it around today you ask it's because we are seminally present in Adam and Eve we are all the bloodline of Adam and Eve so we therefore deserve punishment for what our ancestors did so so natural evil is a punishment and a result of moral evil um, and therefore God is not responsible. God is not responsible to stop and do something for something that he did not create or bring in. The other area of Augustine is this idea of a privation. Evil is a privation. It is where something is lacking goodness is lacking so evil is a privation or an absence of good you cannot create an absence you can't create a lack of something it is where a lack of goodness is which is what happens when you bring your moral evil you turn your back on god bringing in other evils into the world we then have John Hick, which um, is a new modern take on um, Irenaeus's theodicy. And what John Hick argues um, in Irenaean light is that we are made in the um, image of God and move into the likeness. And when we're made in the image of God, uh, taken from that quote in Genesis, we are made in the image of God, but we are spiritually immature. We're like rebellious children. We are trying to find our way and we therefore make a lot of mistakes, but we're trying through being tested and challenged to move into that likeness, that relationship and that oneness with God. And so what happens is when we make mistakes, it's because like Adam and Eve, they were not mature enough to make that decision. And so what happens is we are uh, we are punished and um, we are tested and so evil is a test to help us learn how we should behave um, for Augustine this world is soul deciding in that what happens to the fate of your soul heaven or hell is decided in this world whereas for John Hick through Irenaeus is this idea that this is the veil of soul making our souls are made developed nurtured in this world through those trials and those tests um, John Hick however was very different from Irenaeus and John Hick believed everybody eventually would go to heaven some through purgatory Irenaeus did not believe in this he believed that hell was still necessary for people that turned their backs completely on God and in again against heresies he presents the idea of the potter and the clay god is the potter we are the clay and if you turn your back on god you let yourself go dry to god then um, and you do not let god's hands mold you and guide you through these tests then um then you you'll you'll end up in hell for not accepting god's help that he gives you how am I doing for time? One more minute left. So a few extra names that you could bring into this topic. You have a few supporters of free will. Free will is the issue. If we didn't have free will, then we wouldn't be able to do moral evils, bringing in natural evil. But we have free will because free will is important. And why is free will important? John Hicks says that we have to be free in order to love God. Love cannot be forced. If God just said, no, you're all going to just love me, follow me, and I'm going to give you no free will. Why would God want that? No, with free will, though, comes that chance of disobeying and turning away from him. And so we have to be free to love God. And this is presented by John Varda's Peasant Girl idea story, um, where he talks about the uh, peasant girl falls in love with... No, it's 
sorry, the king falls in love with a peasant girl. He can force her to marry him, but not to love him. Similarly, we have people like Swinburne that says if God was constantly intervening in our lives, it'd be like an overprotective parent. Every time we fall over, he picks us up. And therefore, again, free will would be diminished because we'd think, oh, well, God does exist because he constantly comes and helps us out. Um, somebody against free will, though, is Dostoevsky. That is time. Uh, dismiss. Um, I'll just finish that point off. Um, a critic against free will is Dostoevsky. He's the one that argues that free will comes at too high a price. He would rather not have it. And so he presents the story of um, a servant boy that was playing with the master of the house's dogs. He's um, running around with them. And one of the prize um, uh, hunting dogs breaks its leg and therefore it is no good to the master of the house. And so as punishment to the boy, he takes the boy's clothes off and makes him run out into the field while his parents watch the child be mauled to death by the other dogs. Now... Whether this story has um, truth or is based on something that he heard or something that actually was true from his day, um, we don't really know. But as far as the story itself, he's saying that these horrible, horrible, horrible things happen in the world that we do to one another because we have free will and he'd just rather not have it. It comes at too high a price when we see how people treat one another. Um, don't forget in this question as well to always bring in what's happening in the world. Give recent um specific examples um, and this is known as the evidential part so always give examples um, of things that happen in the world that could show the problems that we have with evil right folks thank you very much for watching if you've liked this give me a little uh, like and hopefully you do find it useful and don't forget to subscribe as well um, so that you always keep up to date with all the latest videos thanks very much guys bye for now